Everybody, uh, thank you so much for coming out tonight. Um, I'm Simon Vazek Levinson. I'm an editor at Rolling Stone magazine, and I'm about to be joined by a very special guest. Uh, this is one of the most influential figures in hip hop in the last 10 years. This is a man who defines the term "we the best." This is I'm talking, of course, about the legendary DJ Khaled. Now. Khaled is someone who has an incredible catalog. I was listening you know, to some of his back music on Apple Music last night just to refresh my memory, and it's incredible how many hits this guy has. And uh, in fact, he's about to bless us with another one. Uh, his latest album, I <laughs> he has a new album, I Changed A Lot, coming out this Friday, so there's still time to get those pre-orders in on iTunes. And uh, without further ado, uh, Khaled, would you like to join us? Thank y'all for coming out, man. So can I, I need that gold. That's the new gold, Apple. <laughs> I need, yo, Jay, find out how much one of these costs, because I need to get this one. I need to get a new laptop. It looks nice. Uh, so, Cal, how are you feeling tonight? I'm blessed. You know, I'm from Miami, so, you know, I, I got the chinchilla on. It's, it's cold weather. It's cold weather. I'm not used to it, but um, I'm excited, man. The release is this Friday. Feel free, if y'all love this interview and you love what I'm doing, Feel free to pre-order the album today on your iPhones. Um, thank you. I appreciate it. So, you know, that's what we hear. Right, okay. So this is very exciting in the music world that you have a new album coming out. And, uh, you know, the album is a little bit of a surprise. You actually only announced it about a week ago, right? So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I wanted to, um, I wanted to do more for my fans. Um, you know, it's been like 10 years I've been giving the fans and myself and just the love of music anthems, you know what I'm saying? And... This album, I wanted to give y'all more music before I gave y'all the date and the album. So, you know, I started off with They Don't Love You No More with Jay-Z, you know what I'm saying? Rick Ross, Meek Mill, uh, French Montana on a record. Then I gave you Hold You Down with Chris Brown, August Future, and Jeremiah. That went number one, thank you. Um, and then I came with How Many Times, you know, with Chris Brown, Big Sean, Lil Wayne, uh, top 10 record in the country, and now I decided to drop two singles at the same damn time because I wanted to I wanted to excite my fans before I gave the date out. So I dropped the two singles, Gold Slugs and You Mind, one with Trey Songs, Future and Jeremiah, and I teased the song at the end of the, the You Mind video, and then Gold Slugs with um, August, Chris, and Fetty Wap. And the reason why I wanted to drop two singles, I wanted to challenge myself and I wanted to challenge radio, but this was all for the fans to get more. And then I announced the date. And I dropped two videos at the same time. So, you know, I'm thinking about when I, when I was listening to Jay-Z or Biggie or Nas, you know, when I was, you know, I'm still young, but when I was real young, um, how excited I was to hear Hypnotize, how excited I was to hear One More Chance, how excited I was here to Nas hate me now. How excited I was to hear like um, any Jay Z song. You know what I'm saying? And seeing the visual. So I wanted to take all our favorite artists, and I wanted to give you two songs at the same time, two videos at the same time, and then boom, the album come out next Friday. You know what I'm saying? So you know what I mean? I think it was important, and not just that. I feel like uh, my fans expect me to take it to the next level. Because they know that we represent the best. Because we the best. Absolutely. Now, so... By the way, this is, this is Rolling Stone and Apple Connection. This is, a, this is big. This is big. Historic. This is major. <laughs> now, um, the language for this event refers to you as the ultimate hip-hop curator. I think that's a good title. Is that how you see yourself? Are you a curator? Um, I look at myself as a... Uh, how can I say, uh, a young icon, uh, a young mogul, uh, somebody that inspires the young world. You know, when I, like I said, when I was coming up, I, I remember Puff Daddy, and still uh, know Puff Daddy, and look at his success, meaning as in, man, this man got a record company, he's an artist, he produces, he has his own clothing line, Look at Jay-Z. Man, this man got a management company, a record company. He's an artist. You know what I'm saying? And those are the people like Barry Gordy and L.A. Reid and, and these type of things that I looked up to. So when you think DJ Khaled, I'm the new generation of that. 
know what I'm saying? And it's important that we educate our new generation in the young world because when I was coming up, those people were praised and we loved them and, and magazines and, and, and networks praised them. Nowadays, magazines and networks, they're not praising us. And when I say us, the young world and us and me as a mogul, and I feel like they need to be educated. That's why it's important that we sit here today to educate the young kings and queens. You know what I'm saying? So I look at myself as an inspiration because I'm inspired and I want to inspire y'all. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're absolutely inspiring. What do you want to educate people about? What do you think is not being covered enough? I mean, I want to educate people when, when it comes down to my music, you know, it's a difference of people having features and a good song. When you get a Khaled record, just know you're going to get an amazing song. Um, there's plenty of people that might have some of these features that I have, but their song is not as good as mine. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, when somebody thinks that this is just easy, nah, it just don't happen. You know what I'm saying? It's me in the studio putting my vision and I get with the artist's vision and, we, and it's, it's, it's a teamwork, a team effort for us to create these classic, timeless anthems. You know, I got catalog. You know what I'm saying? If I wanted to drop a greatest, a greatest hits, I could do it. You know what I'm saying? Some artists or producers and they, they, or DJs or whoever in the music game can't make it past the first single. I'm eight albums in. This is my eighth album. You know what I'm saying? This is ten years of anthems, all I do is win, I'm on one, go hard, we taking over, you know what I'm saying, I keep going, you know what I'm saying, like, I can go, it, it take about an hour to tell you all my songs, but what I'm, and I, and I, I ain't trying to be cocky or nothing, it's, I just know this is the platform that I can express my passion to y'all on a one-on-one -on -one tip instead of you seeing me on a video or at a radio station interview, you know what I'm saying? This is an opportunity for me to speak what I always wanted to speak, you know, what I always wanted them to publicize and embrace. You know what I'm saying? Another one. So tell us, so how do you do it? Because you're right that, you know, you get performances that are amazing out of these artists, right? You know if you hear a Khaled record, you know artists are going to be at the top of their game. How do you make sure that people bring the absolute best material to the table? I mean, first of all, the artists I work with are absolutely great. And I'm a fan of them. And um, I think we support each other. And a lot of these artists I came up in the game with. So when I'm in the studio with an artist or if I'm um, on the phone or if I'm presenting something to an artist... They are already great. I just want to make it, I want to get the best out of them at that time and that moment on this song. Y'all remember We Take It Over, right? Of course. Y'all remember Lil Wayne's verse? I Classic. am the beast. Feed me rappers, feed me beats. That verse alone, everybody ripped it on that song. But that verse alone was monumental, so epic you know what I mean? To me, it was a game changer, and it changed the climate at that time. You know what I'm saying? Like, I try to bring the best out of the artists as much as that they bring the best out of me. If I have an opportunity to work with Jay-Z, I'm going to make sure I deliver. You see what I'm saying? Like, if I, when I work with Kanye, I'm not coming to Kanye to waste my time to get my picture for the Instagram. I'm coming there to make sure we make serious history. You remember Kanye on Go Hard? Do you know the talk game on there? Do you remember Nas Scarface, a song called Hip Hop I Did? I don't know if y'all know about that. It was, you know, something that was important for me to give to the, the culture and, and take it to a next level. So I try to bring the best out of everybody. And I think when the artists work with me, they know I'm, I'm going to hit a home run and they know I'm going to bring good energy. You know what I mean? Do you ever have to give these guys notes? Do you ever have to say, you know, Kanye or Rick Ross or Jay-Z, you know, you could have gone a little harder on that verse or maybe you should do it a little differently this time? I mean, I wouldn't say I would have to give them notes, but I would say uh, I would bring them some, some amazing energy where they, you can hear it in their voice. Some records, if it's an energy record, you hear the aggression more than you usually hear it. You know what I'm saying? What you ain't got love for me, my, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, them, them type of energies, 
is the energy that I bring when I walk in the room. You know what I mean? And I just, I think, I think that I bring a special energy. You know what I mean? A special vibe. And how do you know when they've hit that vibe? Can you just hear it? Can you hear the energy? I mean, the excitement, the excitement when the wreck is done, the excitement when they hear the idea, the excitement when they're in the booth, um, the excitement when I release the record. You know what I'm saying? You know, when you, when you imagine when you, when you release the record and you get the call from the artist, like, man, they loving it. And, you know, I'm like, I'm so grateful to even have you on the record for you to call me and tell me, man, I just heard the record on the radio, man. The video looked crazy. I'm getting crazy calls. That's like a, that's like, to me, the trophy, the, the ring, the, the championship. Like, we made it. We did it. Another one. Has there ever been a record that you that almost happened that you wanted to happen but it didn't quite work out that's still out there that you, you wish it could happen someday? Um, I mean, I, I didn't start on something that didn't happen. When I start on something, I, I'm so determined to make it happen. Like, each record has a certain story behind it, you know what I mean? Like, when I work with, you know, Jay-Z's my friend, um, and, you know, when I made They Don't Love You No More with him, it took me, it took me years to get him on a record, but it secretly I never told the world this, but you know I live in Miami, and I came to New York, and I stayed here for a whole year, and made sure that Jay Z felt my presence until I got them vocals on a record, like I was determined, like. I, I, I end up playing basketball at Rucker. I end up going to uh, Marcy Projects. Like, I want him to feel my presence. You know what I mean? So when I seen him, you know, every time I see him, I'm like, yo, I need that verse. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I want him to understand that I'm not taking no as an answer. Like, I'm going to go hard. And, um, you know, it's things like that that, that, um, not just music, I think in life you should be determined to do whatever you have to do in a positive manner to get your goal and your dream accomplished. So it's determination, you know? It's inspiring when you talk like that. Have you ever thought about writing like a self-help inspiration kind of book just to sort of put your wisdom out there for people? I mean, I, you know, if the time, when the time comes, you know what I'm saying, I wouldn't mind putting a book out. Um, if, I, if I named a book... I mean, if I did a book, it would probably be called They Told Me No, I Told Them Yes. You know what I'm saying? That might be the book, you know? Right, right. So let's talk about that song, They Don't Love You No More. It's a, as you say, it's a classic Khaled record. You got some amazing performances out of those guys. That song is about when you reach a certain level of success and you find that people maybe they're not there for you, they turn their back on you. Is that a feeling you can sympathize with? I mean, everybody can relate to me. That's another thing, too. When I make these anthems, I make sure it's records that we can relate to. They Don't Love You No More, I feel like it's a record where, um, you know, it's like, imagine you in school and you and your homeboy, your homegirl, and y'all work together to graduate and y'all studied every single day and y'all helped each other every single day of your life. You know, push your man or push, push your homegirl. We got to win. We got to do what we got to do to graduate. You know what I'm saying? And then when you graduate and they got what they needed from you at that time, well, not that time, that 10 years of time. You know, it's a different talk when you put years behind it. And then they act like they don't know you. They act like they don't need you. You know what I'm saying? And that's when you hit him with, what, you ain't got love for me? All the stuff I've done for you? I'm not the type of person to tell what I've done for somebody. That's not my style. But there is a time when it gets out of control. You see what I'm saying? Imagine an artist I've been pushing all my life, pushing every day, investing all my money, um, and, and every day telling y'all about an artist. And then out of nowhere, they act like, they gas and they don't need you no more. Because, but what about that 10 years of investment and hard work and you don't, you don't acknowledge the dawn? That's crazy. That is crazy. You know what I'm saying? It's, just, it's so many different ways to explain it. And it doesn't have to be in a music way. It could be in any way. Everybody can relate to that. Am I correct? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? 
All right, so the album is called I Changed a Lot. Now, that's an interesting, intriguing title. Tell me what you mean by that. Um, I mean, Jay-Z said it best. You worked as hard to stay the same. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I Changed a Lot, for me, the title means so many different um, definitions, meaning as in my health. You know what I mean? Like, now I work out. Yeah, I'm a fat boy. You know what I'm saying? But I'm a fat boy that's healthy. Because I ain't never had a problem being fat. I'm fly to me. I ain't, got, I ain't got no problems. Trust me. But when I work out, I feel good. I smile more. I think better. When I eat crazy, a bunch of fried food, I know I did it and I'm, I feel guilty. And the next day or the next week, I won't eat no more of that. At least I'm aware. And that means that's part of a change to be better and greater. I feel like I'm my only competition. So I challenge myself by giving y'all more music. Two singles at the same time. Two videos at the same time. Not telling y'all the release date till it's time. You know what I'm saying? It's so many different ways. And, you know, also I change by keeping my circle tight. You know what I'm saying? Not letting no negative energy allowed in my airspace. If you have negative energy, I'm not rocking with you. You have to exit the door. You can't be around me. If it ain't good vibes, I don't want to be around you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just don't. I want to be happy, man. I want to live life. I work so hard. I've been through so much in my life. That's a whole nother story. You know what I'm saying? And life is real, and we should be very grateful that we have it. So I changed by meaning as in I'm more grateful, and I've already been grateful. I'm super grateful for life. God is the greatest. So let's talk about the ways that you've changed over the course of your entire career, because you've been in this game for a long time. Tell us about how it first started for you, how you first got into the music industry, what your mindset was, what your goals were. When I first got in the game, man, I started in a garage. You know what I'm saying? Two turntables, a mixer, an MPC drum machine, um, and a bunch of vinyl. Everywhere was vinyl. Everywhere. I would sleep on records. Posters of KRS-One, Tribe Called Quest, Pete Rock and CL Smooth, Biggie, Jay-Z, Nas. You know what I'm saying? Buju Bantan, Bob Marley. You know what I'm saying? Garnet Silk. You know what I'm saying? Like Dennis Brown. You know what I'm saying? Osley Brothers, Bob James, Sam Cooke, you know, Parliament Funk. Like I lived this, man. I came up in a special time. I come from a special cloth. You know what I'm saying? So when I started in the game, I always said, man, I want to be the greatest DJ. You know what I'm saying? And 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 my younger days and now. I feel like I'm the best DJ in the world. You know what I'm saying? Um, and at that time, you know, my favorite records were the Cut and New Tricks, who was Run DMC, Peter Piper, or LL Cool J, Rock the Bells. And at the same time, I was making beats, and I started in the game, I was called the Beat Nova King. You know what I'm saying? I used to produce records for Joe Crack. Shout out to Joe Crack and shout out to Big Pun. I did some joints from Fab and Ludacris. And this is like before I became DJ Khaled. You know what I'm saying? Um, this is all out the garage. You know what I'm saying? I remember giving a beat CD to my brother Clark Kent, that's a friend of mine, to give to Biggie Smalls. You know what I'm saying? Because he was DJing for Biggie at that time. You know, these stories is what made me who I am today. You know what I'm saying? So from ripping the clubs to having the number one radio show for like 17 years in a row. That's right. And before 99 Gems, Mix 96, Pirate Radio, Underground Station, Straight the Mud. You know what I'm saying? I DJ seven days a week, 24 hours around the clock. When you jumped in the car, you heard DJ Khaled. When you left the car, you was going to the restaurant, you heard another car playing DJ Khaled. When you jumped back in the car, you heard DJ Khaled. You went to bed and woke up, you still heard DJ Khaled. I'm not lying. I, 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 I used to live in the pirate radio on the floor. Everybody else wanted to go to the club or hang out and do that. I wanted to be on the radio. And in Miami, they heard my voice. You know what I'm saying? They were like, who's that? Then they see me in the club. 
who's that? Every time I DJ, I made sure when you left that club or you heard me on the radio, you was talking about DJ Khaled. You know what I'm saying? And it connected because I went to every hood, every city from Brooklyn to Miami to Jamaica. It didn't matter where. And back in them days, we didn't have Instagram. We didn't have Twitter. So this is all word of mouth. Yo, there's a kid named Calvin. He just ripped the club down. He's a problem. He talks crazy on the mic. And he, he don't see nobody. Oh, man, you heard this record, man. This kid Calvin got something. Oh, you heard this tape. That was word of mouth. Nowadays, we have these technology. And we should be so grateful for this. Because if we imagine if Biggie had an Instagram or Bob Marley. Or Nas back in them days, or you know what I'm saying, like Jigga in the projects with his Instagram, and we could see these moments. You can see it now, and back in them days, it was word of mouth, you know what I'm saying, and that's how DJ Khaled became word of mouth, and the people made me. You know what I'm saying? They made me, you know what I'm saying, and, and I ain't stopping. That's why I go hard for my fans, because that's who made me. I don't care about critics or... Um, people that supposedly know what we live in our culture, they don't know. You ain't never come talk to me and ask me, so how you know? Did you ask him or her? No, you didn't. You in a room by yourself trying to figure it out and guessing. Nah, not DJ Khaled's career. You better know my story. I can say as a critic, that is like a pretty accurate description of how critics are. We're alone in a room. Yeah, but it's, it's not all of them. You know what I'm saying? But the only reason why I'm so into that right now, because it's been 10 years of DJ Khaled, and I feel like the people I name that I, was look, that I look up to, at this day and time, you don't think DJ Khaled deserves a cover of a magazine and being praised homage? Come on. I'm not saying I haven't got one, but I'm saying is. Come on. Like, are you serious? I got so many hit records, and not only do you listen to them, your kids listen to them, not even that, it's your favorite record, and you don't recognize who I am? You know what I'm saying? I think you're making some good points, and uh, it's all love and it's all respect, Khaled. Um, now, they're giving me the sign here that I think we need to go to the audience Q&A, so if people have some questions, uh, you can ask right now. Yo, DJ Khaled, what's up, man? I've been a fan of yours since sixth grade when you was on WEDR 99 Jams in Miami. So your story, like, I've been seeing you grow as I've been growing. To see you here now, just one, just proves to me that one, through hard work, man, you can make it. So thank you so much for this, um, for this moment, for working hard, putting Miami on the map. Because like you said, one city at a time, we're taking over. I know um, Akon was one of, like, your first artists or whatnot. Um, he started at the Apple Store in Miami. I'm not sure I remember that moment I met him as well. But what are your hopes for the future? What would you say to any kind of inspiring artist or DJ host or anything? I know you, you've you worked hard. You actually put yourself in, like you said, the people help make you. What would you say to somebody right now from Miami, from Fort Lauderdale, trying to make it in New York, trying to be um, a radio and television personality as well? Um, never give up. You know what I'm saying? I think I'm the definition of never giving up and never surrendering. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, I, and, and I encourage y'all to go so hard. But when I say so hard, don't put yourself in trouble to get what you want to get. Um, but sometimes you got to show them better than you can tell them. You know what I'm saying? Because, um, you know, I can come up to you and say, yo, I'm this, I'm that. I can do this, I can do that. That's cool. Show me. But, but they're not asking to be shown. So you're going to have to show them. And then they're going to see because they have no choice to see. You see what I'm saying? That's the key. You'd be surprised. Like, you know, if you're an NBA player, trust me, if you dunking and you, you shooting them threes, somebody going to tell somebody. Trust me. So if it's getting your block hot or if it's singing in the shower and then somebody passes the word outside your house to your neighbor, it, 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 that's how it go. You know what I'm saying? And the word get out. And then you realize what, what, what's your niche. And then you just keep going hard, you know? Thank you for having me here. Um, DJ Cali, respect. What's Hello, up? everybody here, too. I'm from the Bronx, HD. Question for you. What's your creative process? I know you knocking these records out the park. Everyone, respect for that. Um, just a little insight. How you making these records? I, I know as from an artist's perspective, you know, you, you record 100 records and you pick out the best 10. So we're not even hearing your whole catalog. So I just want to know a little bit, breaking your head a little bit, to see how, how your process, you doing this. 
um, you know, it's important to have a good team. You know, the, the saying, teamwork, make a dream work. Um, every producer or every leader or every coach has a vision. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes, like, you know, I look up to Quincy Jones. You know, Quincy Jones, when he was in the studio with Michael Jackson, I wasn't there, but I'm sure that he had the best keyboard player, the best guitarist, the best engineer, the best guy that mixed the record, the best um, speakers and uh, made sure the AC temperature was right. Just everything as a team, right? Um, me, I always start with production first. If it's me collaborating with another producer, shout out to Lee on the beats that produce um, Gold Slugs, You Mind How Many Times and Hold You Down with me. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, and he signed to We The Best. I want to praise him because he's a young king and he's growing and he's becoming to be super great. And when we work together, it's amazing. Some people just have that, you know, certain people I can rock with that can see what I'm trying to do and we can put it into light. So I always start with the production. Then I come with, you know, I try to present um, the artist some type of idea of the direction I want to go into as much as I can. Each record has a different story, but um, I'll try to throw an idea out there. Like when we made They Don't Love You No More, I already knew I was going to call it They Don't Love You No More. You see what I'm saying? But now we got to make the song. You know what I'm saying? When we made You Mine, I already knew that, you know, the song was going to be called You Mine before we made the song You Mine. You see what I'm saying? So it's an energy and a direction and a topic that we can all build together as artists, producers in the room, and then we put it to light. You know what I'm saying? What encouraged you to branch outside the music business and launch other brands? Um, it's always been a dream of mine, man. When, when, I, when I started We The Best, I always knew it was going to be bigger than a record company. I don't know if y'all know, We The Best is a, is a label, a management company, a publishing company, and it's a big brand that represents the people. You know what I mean? Um, if you notice, I said We The Best, not I'm The Best. We The Best. Y'all The Best. We to collectively are The Best. Um, and, um... I got a chance to put out some headphones um, and teamed up with Bangin' Ocean and Heads Audio. Um, you know, I'm working on a video game that's about to come out. Um, you know, I'm doing a bunch of stuff, and I just want to take the brand to the next level, the next level, the next level. And um, I want to keep my brand people-driven. You know what I'm saying? Um, because I feel like we the best is something timeless. I think it represents... Uh, just greatness, you know what I'm saying? There's no reason why we don't tell ourselves that we're the best. Because if you don't speak success in existence, then you're cheating yourself. You know what I'm saying? You got to speak wins all the time. Every day, like, I, I just opened a restaurant um, called Finger Licking in Miami Gardens, Carroll City. I partnered up with a good friend of mine named E-Class. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm in the restaurant business. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to open one up in New York. You know what I'm saying? Like, you see what's going on here? Like, off of one seed, you know what I'm saying, becomes more seeds. So, uh, and it's such a blessing because my music is my, my one big promotion. And that was all from being a kid in the garage. You know what I'm saying? And I end up making a career out of it. You know, if you could do something that you love, that's such a blessing, man. Hey, uh, I'm a big fan. I already pre-ordered the album. Some of my friends are pretty ignorant towards what you do in your music. They say things like, oh, since I don't hear his voice on the track, I don't think he had anything to do with it. What would you tell them that you do? Um, bow down and kneel to greatness. Uh, um, um, I mean, you know, them, them people never really bother me. Um, and if I ever let them bother me, I wouldn't be who I am. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Obviously... Their opinion never affected me in no way. I'm eight albums in. I'm over 20 million records sold in my career. You know what I'm saying? And I'm blessed. And, um, but, you know, they're not educated. You know what I'm saying? Um, they, they don't know what a, a producer or a DJ is. or, or um, I never said I rap. You know what I'm saying? I make, put out 
the biggest anthems in the last 10 years. That's what I do. You know what I'm saying? And um, I don't care about them. You know what I'm saying? And not in a negative way. If I could touch them and, and make them change to be greater, I would. I would give them a hug. You know what I'm saying? I'll give them a free CD. That's it. It's nothing but love. You know what I mean? But obviously, it's y'all who I care about, and I appreciate y'all. Thank you for coming. Thank you. What's up, Khaled? What's up? I'm from Fort Lauderdale, also like that guy. So uh, 99 Jams, all that. been listening to you. If we go back the 10 years, even a little bit before that, from this ain't a movie dog, the mixtape, you yeah. had exclusives from everybody. Remember like on that, that one? Amazing. You had everyone from Blue Da Vinci to Missy Elliott on there. And Timberland and Scott's Torch all live. Tim and everything. Scott's Torch in the studio together playing live on the tape. Incredible. Um, so from going back then till now, how have you been able to establish and maintain these relationships with all these artists this entire time that are look like genuine relationships? Yeah, all my relationships. That's what I that's another thing too, y'all need to know. My relationships, and I think y'all should take this. My relationships mean more to me than money. Um, I'll do I won't do something if I think it's gonna affect my relationship. You know what I'm saying? You know how much money I've refused in my life because I might thought it was gonna be delicate? It might be a downfall for me, I don't know, but it hasn't been because I just have a good heart. And what I mean by that is like, I feel like if I rock with you, I'm gonna rock with you all the way, not halfway. And a lot of these artists, most of them, we came up together, meaning as in, I remember the first time Chris Brown dropped his first single. I was outside the studio, and when he was done with the song, they gave it to me. I went on the radio and played it, and that was his very first song he ever put out on a, as a major artist. I remember when Kanye West, when they wouldn't play Kanye West, and they would give, he would give it to me, and I remember I would play it every single day when they didn't like Kanye West. You see what I'm saying? So I think some of these artists, we have a mutual respect for each other and grind it. And you can hear it in the music. You heard Kanye on Grammy Family. You know what I'm saying? He bigged me up by, you know, saying, babe, they wouldn't play me until Khaled turned the volume up. You see what I'm saying? I ain't lying. He said it. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's just, that, that's the type of relationship, meaning as in, we respect each other, we respect each other's grind. And that is that, we respect each other's talents and when we come together, we know we're going to win big. And the fans going to love it. And it's authentic. And it's real. And the new generation that works with me and I work with them, they have respect. And I respect them too. And then we build a relationship from there. You know what I'm saying? Hello. Hi. Um, I want to start off by thanking you. Um, my 11-year-old son is sitting right here. And you, you are some, his you idol. Nice you you sent him that free. to He DJed the White House, and you guys sent it. And we wanted to personally nice tell you thank brother. you very, very much. He, he eats and sleeps with those. But I wanted to ask you personally, what advice do you have for my baby who idols you? So let me rewind this. He went to the White House? He went to the White House. He played um, for the um, Easter egg roll, and you guys sent him those. So he wore those at the White House. Well, to represent you, and my advice is I this. don't know if you know, but you have a big effect on the youth, and he is the future. That's right. And my advice is, man, you starting off amazing at an early age. You're already rocking the White House. You, already, you got your mother proud of you. And my advice is keep working hard, keep loving your family, keep doing good in school. And I think and I know whatever you're doing is right because... You're already making world news already. And they're going to talk about that moment you did in the White House. How old are you? 11 years old. When you're 16 or 20 years old, they're going to bring that back up with your new success story. So just keep going hard, man, and, and, and see how your mother's here with you. That's amazing. You know what I'm saying? She brought you here, man. That means she believes in what you believe in. You know what I'm saying? And that alone is amazing. That means you good. All you got to do is be focused. That's it. God bless. 
All right, now, uh, sadly, I think that's all we have time for today. Thank you all so much for coming out here. Uh, please don't forget to pre-order Khaled's new album, I Changed a Lot, on iTunes. Uh, buy a copy of Rolling Stone magazine, too, while you're at it. Hey, and thank you so much, Khaled, for coming out. Thank you, man.